It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for being here. This is going to be Behind the Score, episode 21. Glad that you are with us. So, this is going to be a fun episode. Uh, this is going to be a piece called Drip by Tigran Hamasian. And uh, I actually was not planning on doing this as a behind the score. It's been on the list for a long time and slated for a World Wednesday episode. And I was getting ready to actually put it in as a World Wednesday episode, either this week or the previous week. And as I was getting ready to do it, I realized there is a poor soul named Jake O'Connor who has painstakingly put together a transcription of this piece for us. And rhythmically, uh, and sonically, this is something that now that I have access to a really what looks like a wonderful transcription, uh, this is something that we need to take some time to dive into. So thanks for being here. Uh, Tigran uh, is from Armenia. He was born in 1987, so he's a younger guy. His compositions are influenced by uh, a lot of folk music from his native Armenia, as well as jazz, jazz fusion, uh, pop. Uh, and some heavy metal. In fact, as a young child, he dreamed of being a thrash metal guitar player. He started taking lessons, music lessons, uh, when he was nine, and he recorded his first album when he was 18 years old. Uh, he is uh, now, uh, in his adult age, a, an award-winning multifaceted composer and performer. This piece called Drip was originally... Uh, released on an album called Shadow Theater, his fifth album that was released back in 2013. Uh, for today, though, I, we are going to look at this piece being performed with uh, the Berkeley Middle Eastern Fusion Ensemble. This is a an ensemble at, uh, at Berkeley, uh, which is a premier music school in Boston. And... Uh, uh, this ensemble is offered as a class at Berkeley. Uh, they are an advanced performance ensemble geared towards experimentation with integrating traditional and contemporary musical sounds and styles, including influences from North Africa, the Middle East, the Balkans, the Mediterranean, including traditional Lebanese, Egyptian, Turkish, Algerian, Bulgarian, and Gypsy musical sounds. They often work hand in hand with leading fusion artists. And that's what happens in this video, y'all. Uh, this performance was arranged by the ensemble and it was published to Berkeley's YouTube channel in 2018. And it has uh, over uh, 1.5 or almost uh, 1.5 million views. It's about an eight minute piece, uh, y'all. So here's what I want to do. The um, the way that the the video, the performance video looks and sounds uh, looks like something that I definitely want to take a look at. So we're going to start by getting introduced to the piece by watching the the video from uh, the Berkeley College of Music and and then we'll go back and dive into the notation. OK, so strap in, y'all. It's going to be fun. This is Drip uh, by Tigran Hamasian. Uh, with the Berkeley Middle Eastern Fusion Ensemble. All right, here we go. I love how you can hear him. T -t -t -t. some strings, a, an acoustic guitar played with some percussion, a vocal ensemble. It grooves like it's in four, right? But it's rhythmically tight, right? drummers sax 
saxophone. It's pretty rad, isn't it? layering based on that same idea. That's a sophisticated rhythm. how there's two drum players playing in basically a, a U-shaped pattern there. And it still grooves like it's in four, but man, they're playing all around the major beats. And there's some, it looks like a really interesting asymmetrical patterns within each of these quarter note beats. Occasionally I even get a Bruce Hornsby vibe from this, you know? Just with the voicings that he's using on the piano. shot and recorded which is why I wanted to use this this recurring very haunting melody they're using the same drum Eastern scat singing. Mm. 
Now they're just showing off. The one drummer hit the other drummer's stick. Meanwhile, the guy singing is just unbelievable. There's that flat two to one. They've been doing a little bit in that double harmonic scale. But mostly just in minor. Same thing at another pitch level. It's a breathtaking piece, isn't it? It's really fun. So imagine taking that and trying to transcribe all of it. That is what this other guy has done. And we have our work cut out for us, y'all. Uh, but it's going to be quite a fun time. Uh, I want to talk before we dive into the... Uh, into this chart uh, and listen to it again. Those really impressive rhythms that we heard from the uh, the male singer most of the way through. Uh, I know that Tigran is from uh, Armenia, uh, but those remind me of Talas, uh, uh, Indian or or in general Middle Eastern, and these are just in. Uh, it's their name for these complicated rhythmic patterns that uh, are included in their their musical training and in their in their pieces, and they have these special solfege syllables uh, that help them perform and understand those patterns. I am not trained <laughs> in those syllables and in that particular style of music. I know it when I hear it. Uh, and it's um, it's fascinating, but I haven't uh, ever taken the time to really, really read in and and understand all that they're doing from that point of view. But man, it, it's a fascinating sound, is it not? Okay, y'all, let's turn our attention to this uh, chart. I am showing you uh, this here, and it is by Tigran. And it's called Drip and transcribed by Jake O'Connor. Uh, when I read this uh, here in the description down here, he says uh, uh, it, it took him over a year of working on this to, to really get at it. Now, that's daunting. You look at this. Um, one, it's a very specific metronome marking. Normally, you know, or historically, when we do metronome markings, uh, you don't really use odd numbers. You use 60, 56, 72, 76, 84, 96, 108, you know, 120, 144. Um, and there's a general feel that you get as a, as a conductor for the difference between a, uh, um, the way... 84 feels versus the way 76 feels, you know, there's not much difference in that. Uh, but, uh, with this, they're, they're dialing it in and with, um, multimedia now and, uh, not specifically, I think in this circumstance, but uh, if you're tracking something to a movie, right? If you're making a movie soundtrack, the, the, the tempo has to be specific right? Especially if you're writing to a certain amount of time. So that 73 is interesting to me right off the bat. They've got 4-4. Four, four. Hey, look at that. that. That makes sense to me because that for the most of this felt like it was kind of grooving in a slow four or a medium paced, uh, you know, 4-4. Four, four. The rhythms within that are what look really, really hairy. Check this out. S septuplets. So for each of these quarter notes, 
it's the being divided into seven equal parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, da 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 in the space of what normally would be four, right? Uh, and they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So two sixteenths for this eighth rest, one here, two there, and two there, right? Really, really interesting. So the bees, oh, sorry, I, I started that when I clicked there, didn't I? The bees come on each beat. So this is a B on the downbeat there, and then B on beat two, B on beat three, B on beat four, then B on beat one, B on beat two, B on beat three, B on beat four. Uh, harmonically, he's using this pattern, which uh, mainly is just uh, rolling down from Me to Re to Do, from three to two to one in B minor. He's got a B chord there. He goes down to the G, down to E, up to F sharp, and then kind of back to G there. And we see all of this just from the first page, just from the first two measures, right? So let's dive in and see where he's uh, going with this. Major and minor for a quick second. That's funky. All right, before they move that page, let's take a look at what's going on in here. This rhythm sets up as a motor rhythm. Uh, in terms of motivic design, this little uh, pattern with um, a, um, an eighth note and then a 16th note and then an eighth note and an eighth note that fits into a quarter note space, a quarter note amount of time at this tempo, that becomes a rhythmic motive that can be just churned and churned and churned and churned. And we can start doing really interesting things with it, like here, make it go real chromatic um, and, and then come right back to where we came from. Uh, so let's take a look at what he's going in through here. This uh, A sharp that he's got rolling in here as on the way down is just the leading tone uh, to B. Uh, the voicing is a little crunchy. But um, when he gets down to this E again, down here, uh, over the top of that E, what is he doing? That looks like a B. Uh, wow, a B, so he's got B, D sharp. There's another D sharp there, another D sharp there, a lot of D sharps, and an A sharp. So that A sharp would be a, a it's weird with this E on the bottom. It's almost like, I don't know whether to, to call that an E chord or not. I'm thinking that's kind of B over the top of that E, this, this B major seven sound, right? And then you get these, um, uh, a little bit of that harmonic minor uh, in there. That's T to lay, uh, that A sharp to that G natural in the key of B minor. And then here, the leading tone, the major third of a key, jumping up to the minor third of a key. That's fascinating to me, y'all. But the rhythmic uh, consistency in through that, I think, m allows us to hear those as really fascinating pops of color within the rhythmic structure that we've already become accustomed to, right? So that's where we're using these motivic uh little engines of rhythm uh, can very much help us on our way. Let's keep going. <laughs> Triplets over a beat. One and, and four. That's fascinating. Hold it. This, that, this triplet starts on the end of one and it finishes <laughs> on an offbeat. And this next triplet starts on the end of two. This next beat starts on the end of three. And he keeps giving us the, the, the big notes are on the fourth beat. 
that may be something that uh, he is accustomed to in folk music from from uh, Armenia and uh, that part of the world. That's a little um, unorthodox uh, in in four four to to be putting metrically what seems like the landing point, the most important rhythmic landing point of those bars as the last beat normally the weakest beat of 4-4, four, four, and that's what's kind of another thing that's giving it its flair. That's cool. That's cool. I want to back up again and take a look at this particular chord. We got strings coming in and through here. He has labeled this as, wow, that's really small, G major 9 over B. Uh, when I look at it, when I look like here, the strings are playing a B minor 7th chord, right? So let's take a look and see what this chord actually is. He says over B. That makes sense. The bass guitar is down on a B down here and these guys are on a B there and he's got B's and octaves uh, down there the sax is in and but it looks like the saxophone is written as uh, at sounding pitch so not as a transposed instrument on this chart which is a good note for us to have I know that because it's got the same key signature as everybody else and you'll also notice that the drums uh, have their own staff and their own style of notation. This little clef down here with the two vertical lines is the clef that we use for non-pitched uh, instruments or instruments of indefinite pitch. So that is the clef for that instrument. We've got this B down here, a B there, there's an A, there's a D, there's an A, F sharp, right? Uh, Bs. Okay, there's the only spot where that G is. And it's right, <laughs> it's right below middle C. That G is right up against that A. And above it, he's got, you know, a D, F sharp, and A. It looks like a, a D major chord. Well, a, a D major chord is also the upper three notes of a B minor seventh chord, right? So the fact that he's calling it G major nine is quite interesting because uh, mainly they put, um, it could be labeled as just, um, a, a B minor seventh chord, honestly. Um, but this one little bit of crunch right in this area is what gives it that, that flavor where it could be a B chord and it could be a G chord. Either way, it sounds pretty dope. So let's keep rolling. <laughs> Really catchy. A little bass and saxophone in through there. Woo. A little color in there in the piano. Fa, sol, le. Now, that's funky. I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, the, the voices, the right hand of the piano, the saxophone, and the string ensemble are all in straight rhythms. Straight rhythms in 4-4. And it looks like uh, it's parallel first inversion chords. Most, uh, yeah, pretty much exclusively in through there. And then open voicing, open sixths in the voices as well as in the string ensemble there. The funky part is what's going on underneath it. Check out all of those things. Could you do that? So we turn to triplets. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? One and a two and a three and a four and while well, the other ones are going dun da da dun dun di da da di da dun 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 so straight notes against all of these 
weird triplets and doing them with the rests uh, mixed in makes uh, it much more difficult to pull off. I'm gonna back up just a hair more and then we're gonna listen to this section. There's that big quarter note on beat four again. Two E and a three and a four. Woo! This is where they went to some of that that um, harmonic major, the flat two and the major third. Hmm. Bum. It's a very singable melody, isn't it? It doesn't, it's... Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Right? Bum, 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 bum. Right? So that really quick is after that 16th note rest, right? So you got to really feel the downbeat. Bum, 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 bum. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Right? It's. That's that's impressive, y'all, that they're able to do that so cleanly. Backing up just a little bit. So so far. That's an unbelievable pattern, y'all. Hang on. What is he doing there? So he's got a quarter note rest and then an eighth. This comes in on the end of two, so it's da 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 da. Wow. And then he hits you on the down on the um, on the downbeat here. Minor seconds, the D to the C sharp, D to the C sharp. Pretty, pretty cool. And we're still kind of in the same general thing. He's got B minor, goes down to five, up to six, down to five, up to six, right? So he's landing on that G, right? At the end of this four measure phrase. Uh, this pattern though, if I looked at it long enough, I think I could figure it out. This is one, two, five eighth notes I think long because it comes back at a different time there and, and it kind of ends there but it's that's not quite the same or that's down there like you know you could start looking to try to figure out uh, maybe he um, he took this pattern and and inverted it and did it somewhere else or or this little pattern here and did it you know in a, in a different way but holy moly, y'all, that's that's impressive to me. Here we go. What happened there? A flat? Like an A flat chord for a split second? G sharp over the no, that that's that's hmm. Whew. the jazz section, right? It's inspired more by Western musical ideas than by Eastern. And we're gonna get the, those talas coming in in a, in a little bit. 
And you'll notice one more thing, the, um, the, the dissonance, notice where he puts the dissonance. We've talked about this before friends. Um, um, uh, most overtly the one that the one that comes to mind is when we looked at, uh, Stephen Sondheim, um, back, gosh, that's been months ago, but where they put the dissonance always in this sort of middle range. It's like right around that octave, just that half octave, just below middle C and right above middle C, that money range where a lot of our voices, whether we're male, female, uh, we can vocally get to. And in the range of human hearing, it's right in the middle of our range, right? Uh, that we can, we can get at. And so the stuff really below it gets opened and, and openly voiced and the stuff above it uh, he's not using much of any dissonance at all. All of the dissonance where you get seconds and crunches are in the, is in right in that middle range. It's kind of magical when you do that. Off we go. This leading tone is leading tone to B. Against those uh, those quintuplets again. That's cool. That's. Cool, backing up. That was rad, y'all. Uh, did I go too far? No, I didn't go far enough. Let's see. Come on, there. Wow, okay, 15, 16. There are several ways you can do 15, y'all. Uh, so let's see how he is doing it. And, and you can normally tell by the beaming if the arranger has done uh, a good job with their beaming and it looks like yeah it's uh each beat is three sixteenth notes long so there's three there there's a, an eighth and a sixteenth there's three sixteenth notes there there's three there and an eighth and a sixteenth there so it's in five and each beat is three sixteenth notes long okay so it's like a triplet for every uh beat right and the funny thing is, is that he's used, still using these uh, these tied uh, rhythms uh, to blur that that bar line. And here's another thing that's interesting: he is going, for, he's he's changing keys as well. So let's take a look at that. Uh, we've been in B like the whole time, right? B minor, and and here the bass is giving us B and and some more Bs, and then we land on. D's over the C sharp. That's interesting. And it's the same down here in the bass. The electric guitar is doing it. And then where is he going? G minor uh, or, uh, or B flat. But those are the G's. Uh, no, the D's. We'll see where he goes. But I think he's going to G minor. Uh, let, let's, let's keep rolling. Here's bringing back the same groupings he was doing before over those bar lines. Layering and layering and layering of stuff creates this just unbelievable sound. Okay, root, minor second, or a minor ninth up there, right? So that's more from that um, 
harmonic minor scale coming in, or that harmonic major, I should say. Good on you, guy. Some rhythmic stuff from the guitar. Non-pitched. It changes to non-pitched for the guitar. leading tone. Down by a third. I'd, I'd heard that before, right? Where they move that, that flat two riff. And it ends. Whoa, where'd you go? Hang on. Where'd you go? It moves back down to the B flat here. Where have we been? Hang on a second, y'all. There was the B flat. Okay. It's been on D. So here we're back at letter V here, a couple of measures a uh, little bit before. And we've got these big time Ds down here. And then when he goes up to the higher octave, it's a half step higher, right? We don't have minor keys or major keys that have flat two in the scales, right? Um, so it becomes modal or just a, a different usage of a scale pattern. And the, the being from Armenia and, and that part of the world, using these scale patterns, some makes a, a lot of sense to me. And the voicings are f fascinating. He's got this big bottom open voicing up here, and he gives you a minor ninth above that top one, and he gives you all this other stuff up here. So they're separated enough. They can live in their own space and not really clash and it, it keeps the power just rolling. And you get, <laughs> this is kind of fun here. A little measure of 1-4. I've written a few of those in my time. Sometimes you need to write a measure of 1-4 just to give yourself a ya da da bang just to give you two downbeats in a row, you know? I'm, I backed up a little bit. Let's see the ending one more time. Steps right back down the scale to this B flat. And they're giving you the same thing, the B flat to a C flat. And then the leading tone of the key, it goes down to the A in octaves. So it gives you the upper leading tone, the root of the key, and the lower leading tone at the very end. It's a haunting little piece, isn't it? It makes me want to keep listening to it to keep figuring out. The way that he's done these rhythms is remarkable and kudos to this guy, Jake O'Connor, for putting this uh, together for us. That's an amazing chart, isn't it? Um, it goes to show you friends that um rhythm don't forget about the rhythm um we think about about melodies and chords and progressions and voicings and instrumentation but invariably or time and time again uh the pieces that have the most interesting rhythmic hooks are the things that keep our brains spinning them right so uh, the fact that most of that is just in straight 4-4 four, four, uh, with all of those uh, really uh, intense subdivisions of that uh, basic beat uh, happening, uh, that's, 
Um, I can't say enough about it. This, this was a, a lot of fun. I'll probably come back to this one and realize just how much I missed. So if you see something that you'd like me to look into more in this particular piece, or if you have questions, put them in the comments and I will try to, to return to them. But uh, I think that is all for this particular uh, lecture and dive into Drip by uh, Tigran. Hamasian. And aren't those students uh, wonderful as well? Uh, at Berkeley uh, College, the Berkeley Middle Eastern Fusion Ensemble. Thanks y'all for hanging out with me. I hope that was fun. It sure was uh, for me. And uh, we'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug. <laughs>